we came to this his house tonight. We are happy. We are on the, his holy temple, and he has a, a blessing prepared for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the church, and, uh, and you, the visitors, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite everyone to stand up, those that can, in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord, which we are going to do in the book according to Job, written about Job. Chapter 14. The war of the Lord has left registered the trials of a man in chapter 14. We're going to read only three verses. Job 14. We're going to read 7, verse 7, 8, and 9. 7, 8, and 9. By faith, the Lord has something to speak to you and I through this passage to feed us, to give us strength, to give us courage in our walk. And the Bible says the following For there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease, though this root may grow old and on the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the second the, the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. Uh, like a plant. Now we're going to hear a song. There are many operations of the Holy Spirit to be uh, done in our souls tonight. If you came here in need, tell the Lord, don't allow me to live empty. Don't allow me to live the same way I entered, but speak to me. Visit my heart. Make me understand your good will, Lord. Lord to Jesus. Holy is your name, Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now we're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord at this moment for His holy presence. We want to place in your presence um, our prayer. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. For your hands have been powerful in our lives. And that's why, Lord, we are thankful. We don't deserve anything. But your unconditional love towards our lives make us more than victorious. That's why we're here to declare that we love you. We want to say that you are great King, Savior. Blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's very good to be in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? It's interesting that the service is for Him. The praises are for Him. The prayers. The glorifications. And we are blessed. Everything is done for Him, for His glory. And we receive still consolation, comfort, a joy and peace that can only come from Him. You, do you, brethren, know what the Holy Spirit has to tell the church tonight? And to you that follow us, maybe through the internet? Be comforted, be comforted my people. That's the word of the Lord. That's a message. That's a telegram for you and for me tonight. The Lord is asking, be comforted, my people. But in order for the people to be comforted, only the Lord, with His hand upon our lives. I don't have consolation to give to any of you. Has anybody have? Man doesn't have it. Man's resources are weak. Or they pass. And the loss of a family member, the most we can say is that we are very sorry. And give an embrace. And shaking of hand and no words and not by many words that the comfort will come but if the Lord gives comfort this is the legitimate consolation that lasts us blessed be the name of the Lord we are reading a text of a story of a man that suffered greatly he went through a trial was tried in his family in his financial life and whatever is the trial that you and I entered here tonight, whatever is, is the degree of it, it doesn't come close to what this man went through, Job. It was registered here in this story in the Bible, in the scriptures, as an example of a suffering that, that is only less than the suffering that Jesus suffered, because Jesus was the one that suffered the most to give us eternal life, but in humanity, as I'm common man like us, Job was the one that suffered the most. It is interesting that many times we ask ourselves, what must have gone through Job's life and mind? What thoughts, questions, thoughts, a few of them were registered in the Bible. A few of his friends tried to find, came to visit him, tried to find guilt in him. They asked, Job, analyze your life. What, what have you done to go through this? We are flawed, in fact. We have a tendency to, fla to fail. But that was not the purpose of the Holy Spirit when it allowed him to go through what he went through. The greatest objective was to bring Job from a place of n knowledge of God that was superficial, that was fragile and small, into an experience that was intimate with God. And Job went through his trials. And at every moment, there was another news that came. Job, another one of your children just died. Job, your livestock has been lost. Job, Job, your lands, this, bad news, only bad news. And we many times um, feel like this. Sometimes we went through situations in which every phone call, every ring of the bell uh, of our door, Every meeting that we see a person that I've seen for a long time, we get bad news. Everything is going bad. The try is great, getting greater, it's becoming harder. But this is the fulfillment of the prophecies. We cannot run away from this. The word of the Lord tells us that 
As the time passes by, as uh, the time of the coming of the Lord is is near, the signs of many will uh, the signs will multiply and the love of many will go, grow colder. That's what we see. And neighbors, families, co-workers, and some that call themselves friends only uh, bad uh, words, only words to try to push us down, to make us look downwards, to look to things of this life, words of death, word, words of negative words for this life that uh, ends up bringing us to a deep sadness. But the word of the Lord tells us that we serve a God that wants to be closer to us, that wants to be bring us closer to Him, that called us to have an intimacy with Him. But this intimacy is given to those that want it. And I ask you tonight, beginning for myself, do I want this intimacy? And you who entered here, enter here tonight, you want to have this intimacy with this unexplainable God. The science, day after day, tries to justify the existence of something that may remove the actions of God from any circumstance. The scientists, the, per, the people that study about it, they try to explain everything in a mathematical, cold, and cruel way. And the existence of God may is being more and more uh, becoming less and less interesting. And the people that call themselves atheists grows. And the number of people that one day believed and now they stopped believing, it's growing. But we're living at a spiritual moment. And blessed be the name of the Lord. We have known God very closely. Here is a people. They can call themselves a people that are being taken care of a God that is unexplainable. A God who has a love that cannot be measured. We have had experiences, sufficient experience to say only God only the Lord is God, and no one can deny His existence and His efficacy. In this church here, you who entered here for the first time, know that among us who have miracles and operations of wonders, supernatural things like cures of blind, of the people with infirmities that it was incurable from the human point of view, that the Lord has uh, turned around by honor and glory to the Lord. And you may be asking yourself, I'm in the midst of such a small church? Yes, in the midst of such a small flock. The smaller the flock, uh, what is the intimacy of uh, with the shepherd, isn't it? When we come to the comparison with between the uh, um, comparison with the shepherd and his his flock, he has great intimacy because the flock is smaller, and the smallest. Uh, scare their the help comes quickly we have we are a small number that's true but this number is being grown in the name of the Lord is being glorified the number of the, those that believe is growing the number of those that are understanding that it is worth to have an intimacy with the Lord grows every day and we see here a word from the Lord that gives consolation to my heart and your heart a word of the Holy Spirit that comes to the life of Job and comes to my life and your life. And we are compared to trees in the Bible and the word of the Lord has to tell you and myself tonight that there is hope for you and I. Even if for there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again. Have been cut down? The world has cut you. Has the family, your family, cut you down? Has your neighbors and co-workers have, be, have you been cut down? Have you been feeling excluded? Have been feeling uh, despised, humiliated? This is the cutting down that the world tries to do. But the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you and I, you and I that even if we are cut down, we can renew ourselves and that there will be renewal in our lives and if we age though it is its root may grow old in the earth the bible says that even if the if we um, 
age to the point we are just dust. That's what the world tries to do to us, the coldness, age, death, and to the point that we feel like we are just d d dust. But the world, the, the, the Lord says that He raises us from dust and makes us sit with the princes. This is the Lord of Lords. This is the Lord we're preaching about tonight. He's the one that we'll be singing about tonight. And if if the just the scent of waters, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. My brethren, just the scent of waters, it does, there is no need for irrigation or great, great quantity of water. The text says that by the scent of waters, it will bud. The scent of water speaks of the presence of the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit that brought us here tonight. He is the one who brought us here. We by ourselves, we could have been in many other places, but we decided to go to the place where the Lord called us and where He would be and where He would prepare for us the scent of water so that the Spirit of life may be brought again to our lives. My brethren, as I said at the beginning, what must have gone through the mind of Job? How many things, how many preoccupations? How many thoughts, one, how many questionings? But Job uh, withstood all of this, believing that the God that he believed was the, the faith of God and living God, the same God that you and I are serving tonight. It's a high God to make your situation, uh, make his situation worse. His wife was, uh, told him, why is still you lost everything? You have lost your riches, lost your health. The Bible says that Job, he was scratching himself away, pieces of uh, shingles. How how uh, horrible it was in his his uh, sickness. Many times we go through situations in which uh, the wounds in our lives are so great that uh, um, as we go through trials in our lives and we try to bring consolation to our situation with things that comes from this earth. And, and others may even tell us, uh, curse your God and die. But the word of Job was on one alone. I, lo I know in whom I have, have believed. I know that my Redeemer lives and at last will raise up from the, from the earth. And even if my flesh is destroyed, my skin is destroyed, and my flesh is still praising him in the Lord. The Bible shows that a man that believed in God from hearing about, he himself sa says this, that he before I knew you only by hearing about, but now my eyes can see you. Because the Lord restores Job in the same way that he restored this tree like that has been described here. He was prostrated, he was destroyed, and he was uh, aged. He was to the point of dying and becoming dust. There was nothing left for Job. And, but the Lord restored him. And to him was given twice as much for the honor and glory of the Lord. And you who entered here tonight, you came here to hear a vo uh, word of hope that comes from him. There is hope. There is hope. It doesn't matter what is your situation. And I want to mention something that have, we have been studying and, and lived many days uh, through Sunday schools. We have been speaking a, a lot about the prophetic moment that we've been living, the, the time of the year, the, the time that precedes the coming of the Lord Jesus. We have been going through many si difficult situations, but this is the preparation. The Lord is preparing us to receive the blessing of eternal life. Soon the Lord will come, he will come back. And, how are you? How am I? How do you feel? Have you been seeking the renewal from Him? Have you been seeking the renewal for your spiritual life so that when the last trumpet is sounded, you, your name will be called to be in, in the celestial mansions with Him? That's what we have been studying and studying the Bible and, and drinking the Bible and because the Lord will come soon to take his church. Job said that he was prepared. He said clearly that before he didn't know the Lord, uh, he only heard, uh, had heard about Jesus, about God. He knew about God and he sacrificed uh, for this God, thinking that that might save 
his children, but he was uh, wrong understanding. Now I'm going to seek the Lord. My children uh, in the world, uh, they live a reckless life, but maybe if I serve the Lord, maybe they will be able to receive salvation. And my brethren, salvation is individual, uh, private. Job had to have his own experience, private experience with God, and that's why God has been calling you and I, so that we may seek our own ex personal experience with God, so that we may say, before I only knew you from hearing about, but now my, my eyes see you. And soon we will be meeting our God and all the bad news, every word of lack of hope that the world is trying to tell on our ears, every negative word, every fake embrace of the, the word, which is like this bear that tries to surround us, all of it will be transformed into life because we know our God that even if we are cut down, even if we are aged, uh, our root is as age and we are uh, close to being just dust. There is hope for the tree just by the scent of waters. Feel the scent of water tonight. The presence of the Holy Spirit is among us. He is walking among us from the beginning of the service. And He will continue to do this until the service is over so that you and I may have assurance of eternal life with the Lord. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless this woman that which uh, I've mentioned about. There is a woman that was greatly blessed on the first song that was sang. The first song speaks of, Oh my Lord and Christ Jesus, I come to plead to you. It's the pleading of this woman. Come deliver my soul. My daughter, the Lord, my sister, the Lord has given you the deliverance. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit asked to give comfort to this, His people. The people is being comforted. comforted. We are now going to sing another song and may God bless us and that you may leave this church in a different way than the way you entered here. Seek an, a personal experience with God and may you have a, a mind of Christ and that in your mind, the more, even though the world is trying to uh, put in your mind thoughts of destruction and death, feel the scent of the, the waters and leave this place with the spirit of life that is in the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God.
guarda a presença do Espírito Santo, consolador, aquele que nos guia, que nos guia, que nos does not allow us to trip and fall. He's preparing for us a life with Him in glory. Church may stand up. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord has been planted us on the true vine. The world is trying to kill us. The Lord is bringing us life. The Lord has brought us to sit with the princes. This is the Lord that we serve. We just need to be close to the scent of waters. Now we're going to have a word of glorification of the Lord for the food tonight, for the blessing of the Lord tonight. For the vivification the Lord brought to um, to us, I want to praise your name because you have been our rock, our security, our refuge, strong refuge. We pray to you because we 
we lack nothing. We praise you because of the sustenance that you have given to your people for the joy of the Holy Spirit, for your word that uh, spoke to our hearts. We praise the Lord because the same God that blessed Job in the past is the same God that we serve. The Lord has been zealing for his people. The Lord has prepared his church for the rapture. We praise you and give you honors in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Father, may your word remain in our hearts and that your Holy Spirit may have the freedom to transform our lives and making us every day accept salvation in Jesus. And Lord, that we may um, take the position of servants in having you as our only Savior receive this service in adoration to your name and take us home in peace in the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our, of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy and the gift of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. If anyone needs uh, prayer, we're going to begin the period of assistance. Just raise your hand or ask someone that that may do this on your behalf. We are here, ready to pray for you. I'd like to remind you that at 10.30 in the morning we have Sunday school. We, uh, the subject of our Sunday school has been revelations. We have received wonderful revelations from the Lord. We have learned a lot. The mysteries from the part of the Lord. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.